Let me read that visa, man. Huh? Let me read that. Let me start over here. This is 1 Corinthians chapter chapter 7, verse 32. But I would have you, but I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belongeth to the Lord. Right. How he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. And that's why the scriptures say those with wives be as though you had none, right. man. Right. Because at the end of the day, we're preparing ourselves for war. We're not in the time of John the Baptist. We have to maintain a certain balance. But at the same time, in the back of your mind, or I should say in the front of your mind, is always the presence of the Lord and the prophecies that's going down, man. We're not supposed to be out here like uh, two-thirds of our people, man, who trust in the spirit of Egypt, and they desire to continue in this place forever, man. In the back of our mind, while we're taking care of our day-to-day, -day, we're always supposed to be uh, remembering that judgment is coming, man. You know, the Lord has given us the light, and with that light, we're supposed to let it shine, man. And, uh, and, and that light is exposing a lot of the darkness of this world, man. You got up. This is Matthew's chapter 12, verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. So the Lord himself is meek and, and, uh, and uh, humble, man. You know, you got all these leaders that lead over our people, whether it be uh, the presidents, these pastors, and they rule proudly, man. These pastors in these churches, they get rich off of you, uh, off of the congregation, and then flaunt the wealth of the congregation in front of them, man. The Lord said he's meek and lowly, man. Put his yoke on your neck, man. You got it. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Yeah. It's not a grievous thing to try to keep the laws to the best of your ability and have faith in your house by Shemiah was shot. But it is if you love this world, man. It is going to be difficult if you love this world and you wish to continue in this uh, madness that this world has to offer. If you want a piece of a crumb from the uh, oppressor's table, man. If that's your will, then keeping the will of your house by Shemiah was shot is going to be difficult for you. You got it. Uh, I got a quick one. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 18. It says, the simple inherit folly, right? but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. Exactly, and we're being crowned with knowledge right now on the highways and hedges, and we're sharing that knowledge to the hopeful elect, man. Whether it be in YouTube world, or whether it be the hopeful elect that was chosen from the foundation of the earth to hear this message when they walk by on this Saturday, man. If that be in the will of the Lord, man. But the simple, the ones that continue to walk by, the ones that scoff, the ones that just simply can't get the message, Destruction is going to be unto them, man. For two-thirds of our people, that's a mercy kill. For the heathens, that's a judgment, man. And that's the uh, that's what the Lord is bringing us into, man. The wisdom is being proclaimed, and now destruction is about to play out. All of the words of the prophets are about to be made manifest, man. Okay, but this is going back into, like, you know, being as if you had wives, you're being as though you had none, though. Nah. When you go into the law, when you go into Exodus, right? Exodus chapter 19, so in that verse 14, it says, And Moses went from the mount unto the people, and sanctified the people, they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning, that there were thunders and lightnings, and the thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with the Most High, and they stood at, you know, another part of the mountain. So even, you know, when they was getting ready to deal with the Most High, man, you wasn't even supposed to deal with your wife anyway. You know, you're supposed to, you know, have, you got sanctified, you know, when you're dealing with your wife on that level, you, you know, you're unclean. That's why you're supposed to take a shower after you deal with your woman, man. And you're still unclean until that, that next day at Sunday. But, you know, uh, like the uh, like Paul was saying, man, it's not that you should be unmarried. That's godly wisdom. He said that if you burn, if, if, if it burn, if you burn, then uh, marry your virgin, man. You know, or, or your damsel, you know, roughly paraphrasing. So it's a balance with it, but the, the wisdom is that even though we have, uh, we are preparing for war. 
that uh, that the Lord is preparing us in our minds to uh, gird up our loins, man. Whether we have wives or not, man. Those that have wives be as though they had enough, which means make this truth your priority, man. Peter had a wife, man. So it ain't saying that you shouldn't marry at all, man. If it's in the uh, Lord's spirit to put it on you to be a unit for the uh, for the gospel, then that's on you, man. That's this is um. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse, let's start at 26. I suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present distress. I say that this is good for a man so to be. Are thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loose. Right. Are thou loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. But if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin... Mary, she have not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. Exactly, because Paul was given a dispensation to be a eunuch, man. But Paul, even, even though Paul's dispensation was to not have a wife, he still gave godly wisdom to say, look, if you're married to a woman, don't turn her into an adulterer. Because by you dismissing her and divorcing her, and she hasn't done anything wrong to you, you're, you're forcing her to be an adulteress, man. That's why I say seek not to be unmarried, man. If she be pleased, if she be pleased to dwell with you, man, dwell with her. Because that's, that's a balance. Every man that the Lord is going to call out of, uh, out of their walk, a life, is not going to be a eunuch, a literal eunuch, man. In the, in the Revelation, when it's talking about virgins, it's talking about virgins from the philosophies that's out here in the world, that's not literal virgins, man. Because Paul, because Paul said what? Uh, I, I prepared you as a chastened uh, virgin for the Lord, man. And he was discussing uh, doctrines, man. He said, "I prepared you as a chaste virgin. How have you been uh, called away from what I prepared you for, man?" And what was he doing? He was giving them the doctrine of Yahweh Hashem Yahushua. So if you're married to a woman, don't turn her into an adulteress by divorcing her. Because right. even uh, Yahweh Shah talked about that. He said that it was intended that a man continue to dwell with his wife, but for the lust of your heart, uh, the divorce came into play. Right. And the that's why ultimately the Most High never divorced Yahshua Allah. He's going to have the compassion in the end anyway to bring us back onto him because he's our husband, man. Because I'm going to say this in the spirit too. A lot of times we want a woman that's like Sarah and we not, we not. We not Isaac yet, man. We not David. The portion of a we're, wicked we're, man is a wicked woman. Right. It's, it's a, it's but at the same time, you got to deal with the woman that you got according to wisdom, man. If she be pleased to dwell with you, if there's peace in your household to a certain degree, you got to deal with the uh, with the uh, the trouble in the flesh, like Paul said, man. You gonna have a woman that's not gonna give you all pillar of rest, man. We not in our rest yet. So you gonna have a decent woman that give you trouble in the flesh. That's what Paul just tell, just told us, man. But you're not supposed to seek to be unmarried from her because she ain't Sarah. Because your ass not Isaac. We waiting on our manifestation, man. We still pieces of shit. And we, are, we should be constantly reminded of that, man. And the same patience and mercy our, our Father has for us, we should express that to our ribs, man. And that's what Paul was telling us. Don't desire to be unmarried from your woman because you had doctrines out there where they was telling the men not to marry, not to eat meat. They were giving men burdens that they couldn't even keep themselves like the Sadducees and Pharisees, man. You know, so, you know, if any brother, you got to be yourself. Because, you know, like, like I said before, man, we desire righteous women, man. But through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, the women that the Lord put in our life, is actually a test for us, man. Right. A test of our patience as well. Because if she, like I said, like the scriptures say, if she be pleased to dwell with you, dwell with her. If you be married, don't seek a divorce. If it's, if it's not, if it's not interfering with the doctrine of the Yahabashim al shot in your labor, then you got to take the good with the bad. Because we not in our complete form. You can't expect her to be in her complete it's form yet. This ain't our rest. If she decent, you gotta accept decent in this time. And even decent is a blessing, brother. What does she wanna keep eating shrimp, huh? Look. <laughs> sir. Sir. <laughs> sir. Sir, let me tell you something. Man, you ain't eating my 
<laughs> you got a little bit more yeah, that yeah, than yeah. me, yeah, you sir. Nah, but, but, but real talk. It said, it said that the unbeliever wife will be saved by the believing husband. And the unbelieving husband will be saved by the believing wife. So you got a lot of ribs out there that's going to save their man. Straight up. That's me. That's me. The prostitute going to make you. Exactly. It said harlots in, uh, in public and shall make it into the kingdom before the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You going to have women that, that believe in, and they men don't even believe. Man. That's what... You gonna have women that save their men, literally. It yeah, said I, that. I, 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 I got you right here. This is a good one. This is um, this is First Peter chapter three verse four. Like, likewise, ye wives, be in sub in subjection to your own husbands. Right. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Exactly. So what that's going into, it it, it, it may be a woman. That's in the truth, or, or may believe, and her man don't believe, right? But by the way that she move and the things that she say, she might win her man over, man. Right, right, right. You know, she might win him over. And vice versa, man. Right, and vice versa. The unbelieving woman, she see how her man start moving, her spirit gonna start cleaving unto his ways, man. And that's why in this world, it's a blessing to have a man of the Lord for these women, man. Because even the presence of a man of the Lord is a blessing unto a woman, man. And it's not being made manifest on a large scale, but even on a small scale, you can see it's that, man. This is verse 2. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning or, or plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on apparel. You see, so it's, it's not about how good the woman looks, how much, you know, the fly apparel, the jewelry. It's about her conversation. It's about her ways that may win her man over. And in the Old Testament, when you go into conversation, it could mean the speech or it could mean the actual conduct of an individual. Right. Right. When you go into Titus and it talks about what the aged woman is supposed to be doing. Right. It says to teach the younger women to be sober. To be keepers at home and to love their children and their husbands, man. It don't say nothing about looking good, right? Because really, right. truly, when the woman, when the woman looks, does all those things, and she looks beautiful inwardly, she's more than likely gonna look beautiful outwardly, man. I got you right here. This is uh, Ecclesiastes. That one. This is Ecclesiasticus, uh, Sirach, uh, chapter 25, verse 21. It says, "Stumble not at the beauty of a woman." And desire her not for pleasure. Exactly. Because in this world, the beauty of a woman is a snare and a trap. A lot of these guys chasing these beautiful women and they really harlots on the low, man. That woman be wicked as all hell, man. They exactly. Stupid. And yeah. And, 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 they, and really, truly, they stupid, man. They don't have no substance to them. And they bring you know, nothing to the table, nothing man. They, to the table, they bring you know, nothing but a face, man. You know, They're a trophy, man. You, no, you know, you know, like the, like you saying, like, you know. Being in this truth is one thing, but you got some women that's not in this truth, but they still like to eat healthy. You know, they do the research into things, and they, like you know, you might not they might not necessarily be in this truth, but they so they got substance to them where that woman wouldn't be hard to even really sway over because she's really already kind of into the things. You know, like eating healthy, covering up. You know. It's crazy. Hey, bro. Bro. You get that. Let me bring this Yo, up. Tell me that. Bring it out. Huh? Hey, man. <laughs> hey, you say oh, you, they, oh, they you, really oh, beautiful, yeah. they, but they really hollers on the low. Yeah. yeah man. It's Proverbs chapter 30, verse 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth right. and saith, I have done no wickedness. And, 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 this, and this day and age, all that's all you see. Them. Go to World Star. Go to YouTube. Go to some of these social networks. And all you see. It's, it's women being uh, adulterous, harlots, man. Hey. Had a man on the phone while they smashing somebody else, man. Gun, gun. And that's accepted in the society, man. Gun. A woman having sex with a homegirl, a home, uh, well, a man's homeboy, man. Like I say, it is. Or a homegirl's boyfriend. The week where the man came down holding his girl hand and her whole chest was showing. Exactly. Like, come this come is on. the way of an adulterous woman, man. Yeah. Both in the spirit and man, and being made manifest in the physical, man. Hey. You got a lot of adultery going on, and it's a wicked, disgusting, filthy act to your how about Shimia was shot, and it's gonna be dealt with, man.
about to say this. She said, it says she eat it and wipe her mouth, man. So she go home to her husband like, she been out having sex with two, three niggas. Right. And she done went and, she done went and slobbed she on mobs right and everything, man. It's uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 13. Give me any plague but the plague of the heart and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. Right. And that's the worst thing a man could have is, the wicked, is a wicked woman in his corner, man. The worst thing a man can have is a wicked woman in his corner, man. A woman that'll smile in his face and be fucking all, all kind of dudes behind his back, man. Because that's the worst kind of hurt, man. One of the most wicked inventions that they done made is the condom, man. Because look at all of this adultery that's being committed with the safety of, of a, a so-called condom, man. All these women committing adultery against their man and then they smile in their face, man. I got, I got one for you. Uh, it says uh, Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you Exactly man and that's what we're waiting on Behold we wait on new heavens and new earth wherein dwells righteousness man We desire women but we don't want these type of women man These type of women are not only used goods but they don't have any substance They have nothing to bring to the table but a face man they can show you how to do Snapchat filters and Instagram filters. They can show you how to do hashtags to get your followers up, but they can't cook a hot meal. They can show their breasts, but they can't cook, man. These brothers can't boil water, man. Exactly, and that's 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 the day and age that we live in, man. And that's why we don't value these women here, man. Because beauty is very vain, man. Beauty don't mean nothing if you can't cook. Beauty don't mean nothing if you can't tend a house, if you can't take care of children. That beauty gonna fade away, and then all you gonna be left with is whatever you, whatever else you had. That's your sole purpose is to attend to the kids, and they can't even take care of the kids, bro. Yeah. And that's why the generation uh, under us is being destroyed, man. Because it's being left unto women to rule, man. Yeah, all they, all they do is, all they know is social media and how to twerk. You know what I'm saying? But you know what? You know what? You know what's crazy though? Because honestly. It's because as men, we give our strength onto women, really. Right, right. We make them feel comfortable to do that. Because if, if, let's say, Jake, for instance, said, yo, you know what, let's raise our standards. Right. Women will have no choice but to find other ways to find a man. Huh. They would have no, but it's because our standards are so low, where well, they can do what the fuck they want to do. You get what I'm saying? But the point in time is going to come where Jake is going to find women that know how to cook, that know how to clean, that know how to sew, that know how to be, that just know how to be women rather than just telling a man he's not a man and how he how he needs to be more of a man. You know? This is Sirach chapter 8 verse 2 going into what you say. Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance. Yeah, so you're not supposed to be ruled by your woman, man. No, your you woman not supposed to be calling man. shots, man. And that's the sign of a simp, man. A simpleton, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even today they call it pussy, bro. Yeah. You're not supposed to be the following the spirit of your woman. Your woman's supposed to be following your spirit, man. And if you're not in this truth, you don't have that wisdom. So the majority of these men are lost because they don't have the wisdom to understand that, man. Hey, the most high showed us that earlier before you got here with, with this heathen dude, man. You know, you, you know, yeah, this is Sirach chapter 26, verse 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. So let me hit you with something else. The women that brothers got right now, you're in the spirit, you're doing the work. That's as God, that, that might be as godly as it gets, as far as your household, man. It might be. If the Lord sees fit to separate you from her, he'll handle that. But you got to understand, it can always be worse, man. Especially with the pick of the litter out here, man. The pick of the litter out here, man, you'd be happy to go home, man, in the spirit. That's a bad that's a Hey, and that's why even with this election so-called, you know, really and truly, you know, you know, your votes don't matter. But in those people, you know, you're picking between, the, you're trying to find the lesser of two evils. But well, brother, that go into our food. Word. What yeah, do we say yeah. about the food? We yeah. got to get the best, the of, best the of the worst. The best of the worst, man. What do we say about the hopeful elect? We are yeah. what? 
the best of the worst. Man. Lord willing, man. Lord willing. Hey, man. Everything is the best of the worst, worst. case scenario. Yeah, Even man. the women that the Lord put in our life, they might not be perfect, but right. shit, we ain't perfect. You talk about a furnace of affliction? Yeah, it's, but it's meant to be that way, man. Wow. That, that patience may uh, perform its perfect work in us, man. Damn. Whether it be in your household or whether it be in your day to day, man. Uh -huh. That the same patience the Lord is giving you and looking over your transgressions, He's expecting you to do the same in your household, man. And the crazy part about that is like a lot of people look at our situations, you know, and they, they can't understand why we so calm in these situations, man. You know? To the point they start to call you crazy or emotionless or heartless or whatever. But really and truly it's just we on the I I, I just but I just, in the spirit, we are becoming cold and heartless because that's the attribute of a soldier, man. A war a war a, a war torn or a war veteran. After he done been through so many wars, there's a certain uh, there's a certain calmness in him. That's what we that's what we have, man. We have a calmness to the affliction that's going on, man. Who's not gonna want to flock to the one with the confidence, man? I say a fool. And when it and when this when this uh, when these prophecies start coming to pass, that confidence is gonna go through the roof, man. Okay. Uh, before we get off the topic, it's uh, Sirach chapter 26, verse 9. The whore of a made woman may be known in her hearty looks and eyelids. Right. Verse 12, she will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he has found a fountain and drink of every water near her. Oh, By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. And that's what you have today, man. These Babylonian women, they'll walk around downtown Saturday Look at men in their eyes with one ton uh, eyes and inviting any man with their hips and they and they uh they gestures, their mannerisms, man. Right. It said a woman should be shamefaced, man. I mean she don't even want to look you in your eyes, man. That's now crazy. compare that into the day and age we live in now, man. For a woman to be with her man and stare another man dead in his face, man. Even that look is an offense, but this world has been so dumbed down with darkness that they don't even realize the offenses, man. You know what if I can say this? When you see these Indian women, hey, they keep their head down. Elon, bro, I, I forgot, I forgot what it's called, but they have, saying, they have a saying. They have a saying. They have a saying in in a, in a Elamite culture that translates to "My husband is my lord." Right, right. Same thing, Sarah told. Hey, hey, hey I be, when I do construction, right, I be going to a lot of these new house, these new housing developments, man. Hey, every every housing development you go to. In the morning, you just see Elon walking with his wife. They just, they walking in circles, man. Is she covered he, up? Hey, she, hey, 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 she walking behind him. He's up walking in front, right. and they just walking around. You know, she walks on the inside, not the outside. You know, showing, because when you're walking on the street, really and truly, let's say you're walking down the street with your child. You're supposed to walk with your, your, your child on the inside, because the cars and shit and traffic is on the left. Right. You know, you know, hey, I see that every Morning, man. Oh, those women are in order, man. Right, but even they starting to get out of order, man. Because you look at them Elamite women that are raised in the Caribbean, and hey, they finished, man. Them coolies, you know, they finished, man. This is Sirach chapter 23, we start at 22. Thus shall it go also with the wife that leaveth her husband and bringeth in an heir by another. Hmm. For first, she have disobeyed the law of the Most High, and secondly, she have trans she trespassed against her own husband, oh. and thirdly, she have played the whore in adultery and bore children by another man. Exactly, man, and that's that's a shame, man. That's why the Lord made sure that our women, because we didn't uh we didn't hearken unto Yahweh by Shemel Shah, the first thing He took was our glory, man. One of the first things, which is our women. Oh. Because uh, Elder Tahar uh, brought it out, Apostle Tahar, that if, if our women were in order, brothers wouldn't be on fire like that, man. If your woman was, was doing the right thing 24-7, you'd be home. <laughs> you'd be like, you know what? I ain't going out today. <laughs> Through the spirit, Yahweh Shah gonna come back when he get ready. He ain't gonna be hastening today. You're gonna be like, you know what? You're gonna be here on his time, brothers. We just gotta be patient. You're gonna be welcoming that because you kicking your feet up. The Lord's like, no. 
even in your own household, I'm gonna bring some certain trials and tribulations right, 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 to remind you you're not in your rest. Okay, okay. Hey, the scripture says that a man's foes shall be there of his own house. That's a fact. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. Beautiful. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the ways of thy path. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It says, uh, verse 13, the Lord standeth up to plead and standeth up to judge the people. The Lord will enter into the judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For you have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your houses. Uh, what mean ye that ye be flocking? What? 16? Uh, 16. Uh, Isaiah 3 and 16. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion and will discover their secret parts. So, yeah, the Lord took away the, uh, the, the natural hair by women. He said Mary Magdalene washed uh, the Lord's feet with her hair, man. Shows you her hair was long and beautiful, man. And the Lord took that away from her. And he took the, the, the sweet fragrance that she used to have, man. So when she got to work hard to get no fragrance. Man, could you imagine them shake women today trying to wash feet? That's going to be like one of them fish, uh, fish, uh, fish, uh, fish uh, scrub, uh, scrub the Brillo pads. Easy. Just take the shit off. No, it's it's easy. Take the shit off. It's easy. Take it off. You're good. <laughs> That's the point around. What's up? Just try to get caught. But the point being that, the Lord took our women's uh, glory, just like he took them from us. He took that glory from them, man, which is why they paid billions, if not trillions, what? of dollars to the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Elamites for a hair, man. And that yeah, hair yeah. is dedicated onto other gods, too, Yankee man. Number five, that that shit is a, 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 um, a ceremony that they do, man, where they cut their hair off and they dedicate that shit Human to hair, another idol. Uh, all these fish, man, five hundred dollars. Yeah, Remy, Yaki, all that bullshit. The funny thing, that shit is backfiring. Y'all deal with y'all deal with too much chew, like that's how y'all know. Yeah, I deal with you from. They be gluing, they be gluing that shit in their hair, and the glue be burning their goddamn edges. Oh, this this is a um a blog of a, a, a East Indian woman, a East Indian woman, and she says uh she says this Hinduism. Is the only religion in the world where the husband is put on par with God, which is not true. But it says the laws of Manu, India's ancient revered scripture, merely informs women they must worship their husbands like God and master, even if he is a brute, is promiscuous, and has no redeemable qualities. Now this is this is a heathen in a heathen religion with more order than the chosen nation of Yasha Allah, man. That shows you this is the work of the Lord, man. This is the work of the uh, the part of man. Our women, our women fight us tooth and nail for us to be the men. And then when they when we actually leave the house, they say what? He wasn't man enough. You too controlling. He wasn't man enough. And how, how you get an East Indian woman that's willing to respect her man like God, and she's a heathen, and you and these so-called uh, Negro, Latino, and Native American women don't respect the greatest man on the, the greatest uh, stock of men on the planet Earth, man. It's because you know what it is, bro. They don't see it from a spiritual point of view because they carnal, man. Right. They see that Jake is what the last hired, right. first fired at the bottom of the toilet because women respect power. Right. Hey, go into any of these hospitals and look who the doctors are. It's Elon. Hey, go into any of these, go into all the 7-Elevens. Everybody named Dr. Gupta. Hey, Dr. Gupta, <laughs> Dr. Hassan just was looking at my, my new CD. <laughs> hey, go into these 7-Elevens, man. You see the sheets with their shit wrapped up with the Maserati city. Hey, that's why, because women, women, women flock the power, man. But listen, that's why Isaiah 4 and 1 tells you seven women shall grab hold the one man, because in that day, the power is going to be with Yashar Allah, man, the elect men, man. The Lord said in that day he was going to make a man finer than what? The gold of Ophir, man. Real gold, man. The man is going to be precious like the way these women love 
uh, jewelry and diamonds and Chanel purses and all of that shit. Made them ornaments, right? The man himself, without being able to do anything for her, is gonna be more valuable than all of that stuff put together, man. Uh -huh. But it takes what? It takes patience, brother. This is 1 Peter's chapter 3, verse 5. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in the Most High, adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husband. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. See? That's, that's the example of a righteous woman, man. And right now, as we're rehearsing the righteous acts, you know, the women that are put in our life, man, if they be pleased to dwell with us, if they don't give us a headache over us laboring for the truth, you know, if they if they don't buck up too much against what we're doing, if they don't interfere with the gospel, do not seek to be unmarried from them, man. You know? Because the Lord is, is developing men that are going to be precious as, as gold or ophir. And in, the day, in that day, the women that are attached to those men are going to be protected. A hedge is going to be around them women, man. Which is why the seven women are going to want to cling to that man. Because the woman that they have, whoever she may be, is going to be protected from the wind. You know? He said a man should be a hiding place from the wind. And if any of you Aki out there, YouTube land, yo, when you get a chance, just look at what the process of, um, before gold is gold, look at what it has to go through in the earth, man. Right. Before it becomes, you know, gold, you know? You know, just look at those those trials and the tribulations and the torture, the heat, the fire, the pressure. Not only that does it go through all of that, it goes through all of that for a long period of time. Right. You know, right. henceforth our life and our lives, plural, man. Cold and a dying. long period of time, man. This is not the first time we are here, man. Nope. And we we ran we we run through these trials and tribulations, lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, man. Our nation, our nation is a uh, is a habitual offender, man. Yeah, hey, and on so many different levels. Our, our um our nation is a what what five time felon now? Hey, yeah, hey, 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 five. A predicate felon. Yeah, we we yeah. we. Habitual. Hey, we got a rap sheet, man. Habitual yeah. offender. And we're 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 appealing to the parole board. Call all y'all by Shemel Shah. Read the book of Judges, man. It's so funny that you say, you were saying that women uh, respect yeah. power. Yeah, right, come on. And the thing about it is, our women don't even respect our power. As in your house. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, Sarah, right. She respected Abraham's power. Right. Even if she right. didn't respect yeah. Abraham, right. Right. Yeah. she feared right. his power. Because, because, because you know a woman is, is carnal minded. Right, man. because that's yeah. why when, let's say, a man, let's say a, a, a chick got a man, a uh, man got like a high position and she can't to some shit in the streets. The first thing she utter, yo, my man is this, my man out of, uh, that's the first thing that she yeah, utter out of her mouth. Yeah, every because time. they uh, gravitate towards power, man. You understand? So, uh, right, and when you did, and, and that's why, you know, hey, the most high hit his face with your shot. So right now, yeah, our women, they don't even understand that we had that, that's our power, man. They're right. looking at the, the vain things that the most, because really, truly, the A, hey, but it's the most high blessing these heathen nations with the shit they got, man. Right. Oh, without a doubt. He, he exact, so, they, especially with the Christian doctrine out here, our women just looking at these other heathens and they're just like, and they're into that vain, that, that vain, those vain, that vanity, man. They think that that's blessing, man. That's the Lord dealing with them. That's what they really believe that in their head. You know, yeah. but that, they in for a rude awakening, man. You know, that's why the scriptures, hey man, the scripture says the most high, he's gonna return like a thief in the night. So as so well, these Christians, come on, these old folks, they think the same thing because hey. they've been called no Jesus all hey, that's their life. Why, yo, when you read Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1, hey, it's wow. not just our heathen nations Jesus, that oppress us, you know? Hey, Jake is oppressing <laughs> Jake too, man. Right. Jake is a brother. Hey, I, I seen a brother go into it, but he even explained that the Hebrew interpreters on the the, the, the three ships was s'mores, man. Yeah, it was s'mores. Huh? Those was those those were s'mores, man. Huh? You know, so you even had Jake, you Jake oppressing Jake. That's why the scripture says, you know, that they shall be amazed at the strangers of his salvation, that we shall stand in boldness against those that afflicted us, man. That's even uh, talking about two thirds of our people. Those are the ones that are, you know uh, uh, oppressed us, man. Uh, you know. I got a precept to back you up about the gold being refined. 
Um, this is uh, Isaiah 48, uh, start at verse 9. It says, For my name's sake will I defer mine anger, and for my praise will I refrain for thee, that I cut thee not off. Verse 10, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Nah, right there. He, he didn't refine us with gold and silver, man. You know who he refined with silver? Esau, man. That's why he's so carnal. He refined, the Most High refined us through what? Through the furnace of affliction with trials and tribulation, man. Go ahead, huh? Hey, hey, because when you really look at it, right? If you got two kids, right? If you got two kids and you give one kid everything at a young age, what are you doing to that kid? Spoiling. You're spoiling him, right? But the kid that grew up without is more humble and knows how to navigate, you know? Okay, that's, and why, that's why 30 seconds. Go ahead. Uh, that's why they got that saying. My right. cat's born with a silver, silver spoon in his mouth. Con. Sir. He, Yo, Before I go, do y'all know who Cat Williams is? No, we don't. All right, man. Come on, man. We teach it, man. Oh, okay. Hey, thank you. I thought it. You but know, that, so yeah, so the most high is refining us not with silver, because that silver is what? That's 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 possessions, man. That's things that belong to us anyway. He's right. refining us through what? Trials and tribulations, man. Because he's working on the inner man. And that's what it's all about. The scriptures constantly talk about the inner the inner man. And that's what the trials and tribulations do. It purifies us from the inside out, not from the outside in. You know? Making us what? That 24 karat gold, which is unwavering. It, when it's tested, it passes its test all the time. You know? It doesn't rust. It doesn't change color. Nothing, man. Uh, I think it was on now. I don't think it finished. That was it. That was it. This is Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Right, man. Hey, hey when, a, when a father um, chastens his son, he chastens his son because he loves him and he wants to correct him. But when you, you don't just put your son on a, a permanent punishment man eventually you gotta let him out the box man and say okay you've learned you know that's why the most high said what he was oh you already put it the most high said he was gonna do what man he was gonna he's gonna lift that lift that big really got stuck malachi 3 and 17 and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Right. In that day when I make up my jewels, right. and I will spare them as a man spareth hey, his own and those son. That are the, uh, that's Yasha Allah starting with the elect. But like the scripture says, that all Israel shall be saved. So starting with the elect men, the 144,000, the 12 men out of each tribe of the nation of Israel, then in the kingdom when the two thirds get brought back, that's how they're being spared. You know? So ultimately, all Yasha Allah is gonna be spit, you know. And we, and hey, man, uh -huh. from the greatest man, which is Yahweh Shai, to King David, the elect, all the way down to the least man in the kingdom of heaven, they're gonna be perfect, man. Perfect. Man. Uh, it's Isaiah 44. We start at verse one. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour out water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass. Right, cause, as widows, oh, as willows by the water course. Right, because that water, he said he's gonna pour his water on him that is thirsty. Now, that's not talking about you know physically being thirsty. That's talking about being thirsty for this word. And he's gonna pour out that water, which is the which is the baptism, man. He's gonna baptize him with the water if you're hungry for it, man. Go ahead, can you start from there, Oxford? Like, and then he said he's gonna put water on back, put water in thy seed. After that. 
I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. Thy seed, the spirit, my, which, is, which is the water. And my blessing upon thy offspring. Right. And they shall spring up as among the grass. Right, because when you, when you, when you, when you put water on your crops, what happens, man? It grows up and it blossoms and it shows forth its fruit. You know, like a rose, man. When you, when you have a, a roses, man, and you, and they're in the ground, you plant that seed and you water it and you nurture it and the nutrients, and it, it all come together over time, you're gonna see that, 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 that nice, beautiful red rose, man. And it has a, a, a nice, beautiful scent to it, man. Beautiful well, the Most High is saying that when he waters us and sprinkles us our, our, our seed, which is our generations to come, that they're gonna spring forth, man. Actually, we talking about all these camps out here. Oh, yeah, right. right. yeah, 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 yeah. Right. That's what they're talking about. Yeah, go ahead. Say, and thou, and thou shalt spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water course. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hands unto the Lord and surname himself by the name of Israel. Right. That's what you're seeing right now. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Brothers teaching the truth all over in the four corners of the earth. Spring up. Everybody Everybody got spring up. Popping up here, popping up there, popping up all over. Right. Right. And right. they're coming back to their heritage. Right. And they're coming and knowing that they are um, of the children of Israel. That's right. And that called right. himself by the name of right. Jacob. Right. 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 And that's heavy because that right. goes, can't see that. That shit goes all the way back to Matthew 10 and 5. When the most high, when Yahweh Shah told the twelve to go out and bring in and bring forth and talk to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, man. Hey, from that commandment, that started to go, man. The prophecy, Ezekiel 37, Ezekiel 36, Deuteronomy 30, Jeremiah 31 and 31, where Israel was gonna get the laws put in their hearts and all that. And the circumcision, you know, and when you even when you go into Ezekiel uh, 37 at the 15th verse, the 12 tribe chart, the plank, the wood. Hey, that was all geared to what? Showing Israel who they were, even though they once knew it, man. That's why it tells you in Jude that it's just, they're gonna bring back to their remembrance, man. You know? It's beautiful, man. And then when Ruth, it tells yeah. you uh, in the land of their captivities, they shall remember they themselves. Shall remember right, they shall remember right. themselves. I'm elect, I'm elect didn't lose his heritage, according to him. Right, right. And if you go, you can talk to the average uh, Jewish person and the average Israelite, and I guarantee you they're gonna know more about the Torah than the, uh, than the uh, um, um, Amalekite, man, the so-called Jew, man. Because the Lord is not just bring, uh, pouring water on us and having us stand on our feet, but he's actually endowing brothers with understanding, man. All the way down to the, the least, man. It said that what you understand is more than men can understand. So even the least of our, our people that's uh, being raised up in these last days are far more advanced than the men of this world, let alone the Jewish people that claim our heritage, man. Right, God, and that's why we read Hosea 1, it says that in the place where it was told unto you, right. you, you are not my people, there it shall be said unto you that you are the children of the heavenly father. Right? That ain't God. That ain't beautiful you know? with Isaiah 4 and 4 and 5, by oh. certain name in Isaiah, and Jacob and Israel. Isaiah right? 52, and we start at the top where it says, awake, oh, I just get that. Yeah, oh, not God, Jewish, not Jacobish, not Israelite-ish, like, no, like literally, this is our heritage. Like, no, we ain't kind of nothing. We ain't just Judah. We ain't just Judah, I, sh I should say. Yeah, and there's we a We got all, run. Of our, all of our brethren. Yeah. That's a run. And that's heavy you said that because there's a, there's a, I don't know if y'all brothers been seeing what's going on in Israel right now. They literally have Northern Kingdom supremacy Israelite groups now. Literally that, I watched this brother talking about how the northern kingdom always depended on judah we need to know how to defend for ourselves hey, that's, what, that's finally going on man but and that's, that's what come, that's what comes with the word spreading exactly man. a lot of uh, what comes with the word spreading is, is going to be following man because Fally, we man. not number one we're still in incorruptible vessels right. and number two you got people who just preach the word for vain uh glory for contention you know so so now it's gonna the elite trials are about to start the beginning trials are starting now but eventually it's gonna go to the elite trials where, the, where you gotta be a big boy to even step on the court in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shah. The chip, that's a big boy trial, man. That's not no, I believe in the Lord and I'm gonna go to work tomorrow. It's not that kind of trial, it's gonna be the real deal. The, the real deal, man. And if you ain't built for it, you ain't gonna be able to stand on the court, man. And that's what, we, that's what the Lord's preparing us for, man. All these little battles we facing right now, are preparing us for the great hour of temptation, man. Right now, we're going through small skirmishes, little scrimmages, if you will. 
But when the whistle blow in this game time, only the big boys in the spirit of Pai Yahal Bashim Al Shah are gonna be able to stand on that court and stand boldly for the nation of Yasha Allah. Because their salvation is the salvation of the nation of Israel in a, as, a, as a whole. Right? Yeah. I'm waiting on, I'm waiting on, on the brightest day. I'm waiting on my slave now to tell me I gotta take the chill. Yeah, because at that point, there. at that point, we done been through so much, we certify crazy to this world. For you to put us to death, you're gonna be doing me a favor. Huh. Don't put me in an hour of temptation to say, look, take the chip and blow my head off. Hey, but go ahead, hey, bro. They start oh. yeah. In that day, why would you even give a fuck about even living, man? Yeah. Every, all day. these prophecies uh -huh. are came to pass, and you done stood on these highways telling people it's going uh -huh. down, and you're going to take the chip in the fourth quarter? The fourth quarter. <laughs> you're going to fumble on a two hey, yard line? Two minutes at a fourth quarter. That's, <laughs> that's why the scripture says. They won't even take you serious in the conference. And <laughs> And the concert, niggas gonna look at you in the concentration camp like this bitch. Uh, that's why the scriptures say wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of right. our times. Right. Because you know, you take the chip in the fourth quarter, man. You out of your goddamn Your conscience. Your your conscience. Because you you know what time we're in. You was your, preaching it. Your conscience is gonna be worse than the two thirds. You, you know we right there at the end. That's right. why it's gonna die. That means the whole time you was a two third anyway. Your conscience is gonna be right. worse than the two thirds. Because you literally fumbled. With the kingdom right there in your hairs, and you oh, literally, you hey, literally tripped over that? one of your cleats, hey, what was that? and what the was ball that? just popped out, and you just the whole crowd saw it. Hey, I don't know if y'all brothers hey, seen the Super Bowl at all. Touchback. With Washington, <laughs> with Seattle Seahawks. Fourth and inches. Fourth and inches. Hey, go. Hey, remember, hey, remember we was watching that with Seahawks versus the Patriots. That one day I told you went on this motherfucker instead of giving the ball to Lynch. He passed it to that oh, other yeah, dude and yeah. fumbled it at interception on the an one. Interception on the one. The hey, could you? Hey, this yo, that's just gonna man. Your conscience like, gonna eat, eat you, you alive, alive man. Damn yeah, and, and that day we gonna we gonna welcome death. Cause for you to give us, for you to put us under that guillotine, I man, that's a one-way ticket, ticket to the kingdom. kingdom out of here, that means I got a VIP pass. Hey, motherfuckers gonna look at you crazy. That means that means hey, that means brothers gonna be. I'm, I'm gonna be on the chariot call waiting for brothers to land. Call hello. They ain't gonna know how to think, bro. How, hey, how can you defeat an enemy who's willing to die for his truth, man? And that's why that's Come why Ishmael is still over there. That's why Ishmael can't come, man. He's a wild man. And that's why and that's gold, man. Wait, what you got? Uh, it's a revelation. No, no, no. First uh, Thessalonians chapter four, verse sixteen. Yeah. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice, with the with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of Yahweh, and the dead in Yahweh shall shall rise first. And we're being prepared like a lamb, man. It said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, man. We're being prepared, man. We're being prepared. The Lord is getting rid of all the blemishes on the lambs. Because some of those lambs are going to have to be uh, laid on the altar, so to speak, man. I got to reset. Let me finish it. Let me finish it. Let me finish it. Let me finish it. Uh, verse 17. It says, then, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And that's comforting to know that the Lord is going to actually give you the uh, hour of temptation. But if you confront it boldly with the faith that you have by Shemiah Shah, you're going to be rewarded, man. If it come down to you getting your head lobbed off, you're going to be the first one on that chariot. You're going to be saluting brothers. You're going to be the one saluting all the brothers coming back in. And, and it said that so shall we be with the Lord forevermore, man. This Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 And I saw thrones and they sat upon them And judgment was given unto them And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded For the witness of Yahweh And for the word of Yahweh And which have not worshipped the beast Neither his image Neither have received his mark upon their forehead Or in their hands And they lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. Come on, man. And that's what we fighting for, man. That's what we fighting for, to reign forevermore with you. How it shot being the first fruit. He said that if you be obedient unto death, he'll give you a crown of life, man. Huh. Uh, Sirach 2 and all, um, what is that? 2 and 2 and 48. Strive unto truth, uh, unto death, and the Lord shall fight with you, right? Yeah. This is Isaiah chapter 52, starting at the top. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee 
the uncircumcised and the unclean. Right. Why? Because the Most High was sprinkling us with clean water. You know, which is the word of which is the words of Yahweh Yah Yah Shimei Al Shai, man. This understanding. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down. And you know, when dust, when it says to shake thyself from the dust, it's come, talking about coming out of that, come out of that confusion, man, and that madness. You know? And that filth, man. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from thy bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. But thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. And how will we be redeemed without money? Yahweh Shai dying on the cross for our sins, man. Uh -huh. In the next chapter, Isaiah 53, it talks about how he was wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquities, man. You know? Verse 4, But thus saith the Lord God, My people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there, and, and that's, you know, that's during the time of Jacob, man, when Jacob was alive, when it was, the scripture says it was like, what, 66, 70 souls went down into Egypt? And so thus saith the Lord, my people went down a point time into Egypt to sojourn them, and as the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, have I here saith the Lord that my people is taken away for naught? They that rule over them make them to howl, saith the Lord, and my name continually every day is blasphemy. See, the see, man. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Going into a chapter we was talking about earlier, how Israel was calling themselves, but surnaming themselves after Jacob. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day I am he that doeth speak. Behold, it is I. You know, hey, when you read the book of Jeremiah, it says that we would discontinue from our heritage, man. A part of discontinuing from our heritage is not only losing our name of Yasha Allah and our heritage, but also losing the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, man. Because that's one of the requirements to being saved in that day, man. It's knowing the name Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, man. It tells you in Act 20, um, 2 and 21 and 22, man. Um, verse 7. But if the Most High said that we were going to know him, remember his name, man. There's brothers on the highways and byways continually teaching brothers. Yahweh is the name of the Father, and Yahweh Shai is the name of the Son, whom the world ignorantly recalls Jesus Christ. You know? Man, I know there's people out here walking around in the truth. There's not even in the truth that will tell you that the Most High's name is Yahweh Bah. The name of Yah the name is Yahweh Bah Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. You know? How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes, publishes, publishes peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Verse 9. Break forth into joy and sing to Salakia. Sing to gather ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comfort, com comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. Going in the comforter. How did the Most High comfort his people? First and foremost, Yahweh Shai died on the cross. When he went back up, when he came back to life and went into the heavens, he told his apostles that it's expedient that he shall go. Because if he don't go, the comforter will not come. Hey, the comforter is designed to comfort us in these trials and tribulations, man. Because we have to have faith that Yahweh Shai existed. We have to have faith that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We have to have faith that all these things are going to come to pass. Why? Because we can't physically see it, man. So that's what the comfort is doing. It's, it's to comfort us in these times. To, to uh, reinforce our faith, man. To, 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 you know, to let help us understand and to keep us in the, and remain to keep us to understand that these are the things that are going to come to pass, man. That, man, that Yahweh Shai came on the scene and died on the cross. And you read the, um, John, the 21st chapter, and I think it's the 25th verse. It tells you that he did so many miracles that if you could to write them all down, it'd be a whole separate book, man. We got to have faith in those things, man. So the world can even pretend. The, the, it, it can, you know, and uh, you know, and and right. It says, um, uh, break forth into joy. Uh, verse ten, it's like it. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm 
in the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Going into what? Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1, that the heathen shall be amazed at the strangeness of our salvation, man. That's why it says right here that they shall see the salvation of our God. Why? Because the chariots are going to be filling the sky. Not only will the chariots be filling the sky, thermal, nuclear, ICBM missiles are going to be raining on this place, man. And you know, the ones that they counter without honor, which is the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, which are the tribes of Benjamin, all the way, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, all the way down to Issachar, you are the children of Israel, man. When, hey, and the elect men, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans get beamed up in these chariots, man. Hey, that's going to be strange to these heathen, man. Verse 11, depart ye, depart ye, go out from thence, touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. But ye shall not go out with haste, nor by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your reward, man. Let me bring the scripture. Right, scripture Everybody, yeah, about to shut off. This is um, Philippians 60, right? chapter 1. I'm going to start at verse 20. According to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Yahweh Shai shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. 